This man's search for dinosaur fossils takes him to extremes. 170. <laughs> what have you found? Probably one of the biggest dinosaur tracks in the world. The last time I filmed with Steve Salisbury in the Kimberley, he was walking in the footsteps of a stegosaur. Left foot, right foot, and then as he's coming into this one with his, with his left foot, it's going for a bit of a Now the hunt for fossil treasure has taken him to the frozen continent, and this time he's filmed it himself. A lot of the places we went to, no one's ever walked over this ground. So to start to find fossils, you just got to go out there and look. Earlier this year, Steve joined a US-led expedition to the Antarctic Peninsula. The mission of this crack team of international scientists? To reveal the lost world from the age of dinosaurs. The Antarctic Peninsula is one of the few places in the world where you can discover what life was like when dinosaurs became extinct and what that means for life as we now know it. During the age of dinosaurs, Australia was connected to Antarctica. We were much further south, and for any animals, be they dinosaurs or other things that lived during that time, it was a gateway in and out of Australia. So for us, that's the next likely place we're going to see things that might be similar to what we've got in Australia at the same time. Antarctica has its own particular challenges for fossil hunters. It's pretty amazing how quickly the weather can change. You can have one day where it's nice and sunny and you can be outside almost wearing T-shirts. And then, you know, overnight, a blizzard can roll in. The following day, you can have minus 30 wind chill and snow everywhere. So I had to kind of be ready to deal with all that sort of thing all the time. Because <laughs> if there's too much snow, you can't see the ground anymore, which makes looking for fossils really difficult. Most of Antarctica, obviously, is frozen. <laughs> um, there are a couple of parts of it, though, that don't have snow and ice on them for a, for a few parts of the year. And there's the very northern tip of the Antarctic Peninsula, which during the austral summer, the rocks there are exposed. And for us, what's really exciting is those rocks come from the end of the age of dinosaurs. The great extinction event about 66 million years ago wiped out most of the world's species living at the time, including all the dinosaurs. The geological layer that marks this event is known as the Cretaceous Paleogene, or KT boundary. The rocks here were deposited over a time span of 20 million years or so, before and after the KT boundary. You want to see what survived the extinction event and how it affected everything, you need a continuation of, of deposition. So you need rocks that show what was there before, you need the event, and then you need everything afterwards. Yeah, in Antarctica, the James Ross Island group is one of the few places in the world where you can see that. So it's a great place to test a lot of our ideas about how this extinction event worked. In the age of dinosaurs, there were no polar ice caps. Antarctica was covered in forests. Rivers carried driftwood to the sea. This here, is a chunk of burnt wood. Wow. So this is from a tree, probably you can see the growth rings here. Yeah, it's actually charcoal. So it tells you that those forests that, that these trees formed a part of burnt. So, you know, imagine burning Antarctica. It was happening back 67 million years ago. At that time, the rocks here were laid down as mud at the bottom of a shallow sea. We were really hoping, like myself and a couple of the other guys on the team, to find some dinosaurs. There's another part of a vertebra 
other bone frags. We're talking about rocks that were deposited in a shallow ocean, so dinosaurs are obviously living on land. The only chance you're going to get of finding their remains is if there's somewhere where a carcass has washed out, hasn't been eaten by too many marine things, and then has sunk and been preserved. And then you've got to find it in amongst all the snow and ice and stuff, so your chances are very slim. I mean, if we had pinned this whole trip on just finding a few fragments of dinosaurs, you know, probably wouldn't be worth it. So, you know, part of what we did down there was just try to get a good picture of the whole biota. So not just the vertebrates, but also the invertebrates, um, plants, to get an idea of what the landscape looked like that things like dinosaurs might have inhabited. Vertebrates like these is different types of ammonites here. The ground is strewn with marine fossils, such as these nautilus-like ammonites. If you could go back in time and look at an ammonite swimming around this ancient ocean 70 million years ago, uh, it would look something like a squid in a shell. Ammonites are useful as index fossils because if certain species are there, it means that rocks must be of a particular age. This is a really important group of animals that disappear at the end of the age of dinosaurs as a result of that extinction event. So we could be finding ammonites right up to a point in the rock where we could put our finger on the KT boundary, and then above that, no ammonites. To find fragments of fossil bone, though, means hours of patient searching in a vast landscape. So what we've done is we've started by setting up 50 by 100 metre quadrats and we're just slowly walking up and down through the section, the long lines in the quadrats, looking at pretty much every rock. And we'll keep doing that until we've covered most of the hill and that'll probably take the better part of 10 days or so. literally spend like a whole day wandering around, looking at the ground, picking up rocks, cracking rocks, licking rocks, <laughs> throwing rocks over our shoulder. Most of what you find is nothing, but then every now and then you might come across a clue that'll tell you you're in a good spot or you've, you might have found something worthwhile. Rather than just small shards of bone eroded out of the rock, they started finding large, intact skeletons. They're not from dinosaurs, but from marine reptiles known as plesiosaurs. Here are what we think are two coracoids and two scapulae, so essentially the, the pectoral girdle or the chest of a fairly big plesiosaur. trying to go underneath to create, I guess, a type of mushroom that we will eventually put a plaster jacket on and hopefully then we can get right under it to the point where we can flip it over and take it out. We found their remains right up to what we assume is the KT boundary. So, you know, just like the ammonites, once you get above that layer, the end oh, of the, they're gone. The end of the plesiosaurs. The end of the plesiosaurs, the end of the mosasaurs. So all those big marine reptiles disappear forever. It was a big job over several days of changing weather to dig through the frozen earth. We were lucky because with the helicopters we could probably tackle things that you normally wouldn't. That moment when we Finally got it out, you know, it was in the net and the helicopter flew off down the hill towards the ship. I mean, that was probably the highlight of the trip for me because it was something, you know, you don't often get to do. Although there are some possible candidates for dinosaur fossils, none have been confirmed yet. I really enjoyed finding these because everyone you came across from a distance until you got close, it could have been that dinosaur skeleton. 
They won't know for sure until all their specimens are properly examined. We ended up with probably close to a tonne or so, a full shipping container full of fossils and rocks and various things that we'll be able to work on for, for many years to come, I think. Steve says that what they found or didn't find isn't as important as the fact that they were actually there, searching. At some point in the future, we'd like to go back, because what we were able to do this time with two helicopters at our disposal was get into a lot of areas that previously had either only just been looked at very briefly by other teams or had never been looked at before. So we were able to identify a lot of new areas that, given more time, we could go back and explore and hopefully make some exciting discoveries.